case on citizen and some of the things that we addressed, if not all, were actually brought up. And yeah, I just want some clarification on some few things. I saw that 50% of, okay, I heard that 50% of the advisors will be shown the door. So I know it's a lot to ask, but if I can get the names so that we, because of course, as uh, tweets, as young people, as millennials, Gen Z, everyone in the country has an issue with a couple of corrupt, a uh, couple of, um, let's just say a couple of unwanted people in the government who are not even supposed to be there, their seats are not even constitutional. So we want to know if, if they are indeed, you know, shown the door, who are they? Because, um, you know, it doesn't matter what 50% these people are. It matters who the 50% are. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I needed a clarification on that. I needed to know, since the the finance bill was also not ascended by the president, since that's what, that was what our initial issue was, so what happens now? Is it just going to be passed automatically after 21 days from the time that it was not ascended? Or is it going to be stripped of immediate, um, completely? Yeah, I see there's another speaker. I think this is Dolly. Dolly, do you want to to pick up where I've left? Hi, my sister. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're listening from. Uh, I'm laughing here because you called me Dolly. <laughs> I'm Kenyan, first of all. I'm fully Kenyan. My parents are in Kenya. My family is in Kenya. I was born in Kenya. That said, it is a wonderful thing that the president finally decides to hold a conversation with Kenyans because Kenyans have been talking for a very long time and pleading with him to, first of all, seize the fatherment of this finance bill. But as we saw, he was in cahoots with the IMF and World Bank. Now, my question to William Ruto is, why didn't he listen to the citizens before lives were lost? What accountability is going to take place uh, in regards to the lives that were lost? What has he done? Has he contributed anything towards the funeral? I had him uh, accuse the Inspector General of being incompetent. But, you know, the judiciary, the executive, the legislative, all those are arms of the government and he is in charge. So him accusing cabinet ministers or cabinet secretaries and then accusing the inspector general defeats the purpose. He probably doesn't understand his role and I would like to know from him, does he really understand after two years of presidency that he is in charge of a country and he's not leading, you know, just a small village. So thank you very much. I would like to have my questions answered. Especially in regards to the picketing and goes on open camera on international television and allows the police for violence against those who entrusted him with his position. Does he understand that the citizens gave him the power and they can retain it, they can take it back? So I would like Mr. President, Mr. Ruto, kindly answer. And I would also like to make a final statement in saying that, you know, our in order to be a leader, you have to listen to the people. If you are just occupying a seat, then you do not deserve the title of president. You have to prove yourself to be a president in order to earn, you have to earn that title. And according to me, he has not earned that title. Another thing is why is he constantly abroad? What is he doing? His mandate is towards the people of Kenya. Why is he always traveling? Whom does Charlene Ruto represent? Because she was not elected by the populace. And why is he rewarding 
cabinet ministers, cabinet secretaries with positions. If he feels he owes them positions, then he should do that of his own accord, out of his own pocket. We are tired and we want to know when he's dissolving parliament because Kibaki did that. So please, Mr. Ruto, when you earn the title, I will refer to you as president, but until then, you remain Mr. Ruto. And trust me, other people have fallen before you. If you continue killing Kenyans and not taking accountability for it, you're going to be the next one. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dolly. Kevin Bugua, you can take the mic. Kevin, Kevin. Hey guys, so the president is here. You feel free to engage. You can send the request, then I'll add you. Kevin, can take the mic. Joy, do you hear me? I can hear you quite well. Can you hear me though? Yes, affirmative. Kevin. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, let you pass, let you pass, take the mic. Mr. Gopi Konga, by the way, Onge to Willemi Wonge. Osama, Mani Skia? Yes. Now, my, my question to the president was, how come how come he's so out of touch with reality? The other day when he was addressing us, uh, he was completely out of touch in reality. How could you watch when you were I commend policy for shooting a lot of innocent guys. Kids were killed. The other day, when that kid kid was killed, I he was actually not remorseful. And Eliza, did that child die? How do you expect such a child to be alive? In a, in a situation, come here. Another thing is, uh, since it's not a dissolved government, I mean, a cabinet. I'm so nervous. I'm sorry. Attacker a dissolve. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of my fellow Gen Z, although I'm not a leader whatsoever. To dissolve the cabinet, sequel reshuffle could be solved like what Kibaki did in the year 2005. Uh, another thing is to hold all the the wrong police officers accountable. Their photos are everywhere, we've seen them. None has been arrested, none has been posted on the DCI page, and we're asking why. The thing is, and whoever recognizes themselves as a leader to us, Yoko Akwakiviake, is on their own missions. Another thing is to please sort out the passport issues. Kidiki, our, 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 our interior minister is uh, somewhat also out of touch with reality and incompetent. He didn't deserve to be there. We thought he was smart until he proved us wrong. Uh, another thing is with the U.S. Embassy, interviews uh, and blah, 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 now eventually on a new Moiso visa. So can they also sort that out as Thank you, Kevin. Say this. Love to answer something. Don't get a laugh. The president will answer everything. We just need answers. That's why we are here. And actions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Otero. Good afternoon, everyone, again. And uh, welcome to this conversation. Uh, I think Otero may finally get to, but as requested, 
and promised, uh, uh, requested by and promised to the young people of Kenya, President Ruto is hosting this express conversation. We are hosting with him together with uh, my co-host Otero. And uh, the president is here allows you to listen, engage, and be a recipient of your thoughts, your experiences, idea Zenu for a better Kenya. Uh, of course, it's a pleasure to be here and engage with you. This is an open forum. We encourage you to ask questions and share your thoughts. Please keep your questions as brief as possible and respectful. Uh, if you can limit our questions to just two minutes, we say two minutes for each person. Uh, as you can imagine, many people have a lot uh, to say. Let's engage. And here now is President William Ruto. Thank you very much, Hussein. Thank you very much, Os uh, Otero. And uh, welcome all good people, ladies and gentlemen, from different parts of Kenya, from different parts of the world to this conversation. As I promised, um, I have come and, I'm, and I want to apologize first that uh, for the last almost uh, one hour, we haven't been in a position to have a proper connection as technology would be. I think that is uh, some of the vagaries of technology, but now I'm here. I apologize that uh, maybe some people have asked some questions but that I didn't have the benefit of hearing them. Um, but let me say that uh, I am very happy that we are having this conversation, a conversation about issues, a conversation about our country, a conversation about um, issues that affect each and every one of us. We are not discussing tribes, we are not discussing positions, we are not discussing uh, all those things that are personalities and things like those. We are discussing issues of importance to each and every one of us from uh, jobs to governance to corruption to all the things that matter to all of us. And as I have said, I have come here to listen very carefully. Uh, that one thing I have been accused of not doing, that is what I have come here to do, number one. Number two, I must say that um, uh, maybe I have been listening in different other spaces, now I have an opportunity to listen on this platform to uh, different Kenyans uh, from different parts of the world and from uh, our great country, Kenya. Now, let me just uh, say two or three things that uh, I think I had the last two speakers um, uh, who asked uh, their questions. The question number one that, I have, uh, that has been asked is uh, um, from Kevin, I think that maybe I'm out of touch. Uh, how did I um, not know what was happening uh, in the country? But let me tell uh, Kevin and all of us that I have the benefit of more information in my hands. What I cannot do is do things like uh, operate on numbers that have no basis. If you heard me very clearly, I said, up to now, 25 Kenyans died out of this uh, uh, unfortunate scenario that affected our country the last two weeks. Some reckless people have put numbers all the way to 150. You know, in fact, on one occasion, the Kenya Human Rights Commission said 157 Kenyans have been, uh, there was a massacre in, uh, in Kidurai. That was not true. And for your information, even the BBC, on hearing such, you know, outrageous allegations, went to investigate. And if you listen to the BBC, they say there was no such thing. In fact, one Kenyan unfortunately lost his life in Kitorai. Let me go to the situation which was, um, which, which happened in, um, in, in, in Rongai, where we lost a young Kenyan. The situation in Gidurai was that a criminal in Rongai, a criminal assaulted the police, took over the firearm of the police, and shot. And unfortunately, again, you know, uh, and we have to be honest with one another, you know, 
uh, it was said that this young Kenyan was pumped with eight bullets. That is also not true in, in Rongai, you know? And so there is a lot of information out there in the social media propagated by people to try and create a situation that did not exist. In fact, I heard Kevin say, I was asking uh, the, the, uh, the, the one who uh, did he die. Because, you know, the, the one that was being said of eight bullets did not exist. In fact, we have now found out that the one of eight bullets happened several years ago, somewhere in Buruburu, and it was in a completely different, uh, different uh, scenario. But on Rongai, I was very clear. I had the benefit of information, and I spoke to that information. The same uh, narrative I gave when I gave the interview on Sunday is the same narrative I have at the moment. I have also been, uh, uh, I have, um, uh, Kevin has also said that um, we need to hold the police accountable. And that is correct. And it has been said that I am the president. Yes, I am the president of Kenya. But the president doesn't hold absolute power. That is why we are a democracy. In a democracy, there is a system of checks and balances. The president is not a dictator. I cannot decide for the judiciary. I cannot decide for the legislature. They make their own independent decisions. I cannot decide for independent institutions. The police, and let me say this without fear of any contradiction. When I came into office, I said, I will respect the independence of the police. In fact, the one act I did when I came into office, the first day when I sat on my table, on my table as president, I signed the instrument to remove the budget of the police from my office because that budget was being used to manipulate the police. You all know that it is said, he who pays the piper calls the tune. So I did not want my office to be the one to decide for the police on who to arrest, who to charge, how to pursue corruption. I provide policy, the police uh, run independently. In fact, if you read the constitution of Kenya, the police is an independent institution. It doesn't take instructions from me. It doesn't in take instructions from the chief justice. It doesn't take instructions from the speaker or from the legislature, they act independently. I agree, good people, that innocent lives were lost. And one life lost is one too many. I have said in my statement that as government, we are going to support And Kakun is your connection. Hussein Naskia. Naskia, Naskia, Otero. Just one moment, let the President uh, uh, use my, uh, my handset in the meantime, yeah? Uh, Osama Otero, I got a question in regards to what the President has said just now. First of all, I'm quite yeah. dismayed that he's still trying to clear his name. It is about accountability here. He's talking about the number of bullets, the number of bullets that killed a citizen. Is it about one person dying or 100 people dying? We know very well that the number exceeds 25 people. And it is not about one person or 25 people or 1 million people. It is about people being killed recklessly. He is still not taking accountability for his actions. And yes, if he says it is a democracy, we agree that is what we expect of a president, of a Kenyan. 
because independence was fought for and earned 12 December 1963. Now, we are still fighting to free ourselves from the IMF and World Bank, respectively. He's talking about the number of bullets that killed a citizen. He's talking about a citizen in Gidurai attacking the police at 3 a.m.? Really? Honestly, Mr. William Ruto, your accountability is zero. I I'm quite dismayed, honestly, because you came here to answer to the citizens, but you're taking zero accountability for it. And if you say they're independent, why do you laud the police for the matter of civilians? Why do you hold a press conference and tell the police that, you know, citizens, that they're gonna be met with equal force if they go and protest? And what you mean, what he meant, he did not use the word protest precisely. But he said, anyone who tries to disrupt the peace of the country, protesters, how do protesters disrupt the peace of a country? Why do you love the police when people are killed? Why are police shooting at civilians on their balconies? Why are people fleeing Kenya so that they may have peace? Why are they being abducted? You might say that the police body is independent, but this is not a democracy. It is not functioning like a democracy, but a dictatorship, Mr. William Ruto, because the way the police are handling the situation is not fit for a democracy. And you cannot deny that you're behind that. Because you can call, you can, even though you say they're independent, you have the power to stop the killings. But instead you go after all the killings, you go hold a press conference and love them. Sincerely, we saw Manda Manu last year, how you dealt with the citizens. Same scenario this year. When is that gonna stop? What kind of a democracy is this? Can you define what a democracy is, Mr. William Ruto? I think you grew up in a very authoritarian family that you expect people just to dance to your tune. In a democracy, the right to picket and to protest is guaranteed in the constitution. The countries you travel to, Germany and you know United States, first of all, why did you grant them free visa-free entry to Kenya? Africans do not have the luxury, even diasporans don't have mm -hmm. that luxury. The way the diasporans are being treated at the airport, these bills now. What you did when you granted Europeans visa-free entry to the country is giving them the right to disrespect Kenyan citizens abroad. And this, the fee that was supposed to be incurred through the payment of visas is transferred to Kenyans. I mean, that is simple mathematics. You should know that. Okay, why Kenyan you German expect, lady, thank why you don't so you much. Set the same expectations for European nations and the West in general, as they set for Kenyans. Okay, why do you sit with them all the time and then the conditions worsen for Kenyans? Okay, if you can hear me, Kenyan German lady, let's give it, let, we said we we'll limit this all to right. two minutes so that we give everybody a chance to. No worries, no worries. You're, you're at liberty, thank of course, to ask your question. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Let me, let me help, uh, let, me, let me say this to my sister. The right to picket, the right, and I said it in my statement, is enshrined in the Constitution. But let me also make a distinction. I said the protester is full within their democratic right, were hijacked. There are people who infiltrated. I, I, and I am very sure that the people who banned the office of the Chief Justice, the people who banned parliament are not the peaceful protesters. These are criminals who I was speaking to and I was saying the police must stop criminals who are banning institutions, who are banning people, people who have gone to destroy people's property. I don't think those who are innocent demonstrators. I know for sure that innocent demonstrators came out to protest, to picket, because it is provided for by the constitution. But honestly, do you want to tell me that the innocent protesters, the people who had come to picket, are the ones who went, broke up shops, destroyed, stole people's property, burned down parliament? I don't think so. 
And we need to protect the protesters, but we need to keep the criminals who want to cause mayhem out. And I have the responsibility to do both by assisting, getting the police to do what they have to do. It is my responsibility to facilitate the police. The police will tell you, ever since I came into office, I have tried to assist them, to get them the right equipment, to get them the right capability to protect the country and to protect innocent um, protesters. Let me also tell you, many of the innocent protesters became victims of criminals who stole their phones. They were, we could, they were all over, who took away their money, who stole from them. These are, this, this is the balance we need to get. But let me tell you, ultimately, after I have said everything I have said, I am ultimately responsible because I am president. And that is why I said it was regrettable. It was unfortunate that we lost lives in this, in this engagement. And I have said government is going to assist all the families as, uh, to the extent that we can to make sure that we, nim we minimize the loss that they have gone through. Let me also say the following. On matters to do with passports, I think we have made a very big step in the right direction to make sure that we deal with the challenge of passports. And uh, even now, we have given a, a green channel to Kenyans who are looking for jobs abroad. Today, there is a green channel at immigration to make sure that those Kenyans who have jobs abroad can be able to be processed uh, much more easily. Let me also say, there is a reason why we have a free free regime in Kenya. And when I say a visa-free regime, it doesn't mean that people come to Kenya for free. That is not the same. It means that we have simplified the process. Today, you will come to Kenya. We have simplified the process because we want to escalate our numbers. And for your information, because of the visa-free uh, visa regime, we now have a program called ETA. Our numbers for tourism have gone up by 500,000. More Kenyans today have jobs in our hotels. Our hotels in Kenya today are 80% full in many instances. If you speak to the uh, tourism sector, they will tell you our numbers for tourism in uh, 2020, uh, 2022 was close to a million. Last year, it was 2 million. This year, we are heading to 2.7 million. It is part of the interventions that I have made. It is part of the changing of how do you come to Kenya. Make it easy. Today, you don't have to go to no office. Today, you can get your ETA, pay for it online, and be able to come to Kenya easily. And Kenya is not uh, the only country in Africa that is doing that. We are all doing that. Look at what is happening in Europe. 27 countries in Europe, they don't have a visa between them. They have abolished visa between them. Why would we want to give, uh, to keep a visa regime that keeps business people, that keeps tourists out and makes it much more difficult for them to come and enjoy what we have? For your information, Kenya should not be having 2.7 million tourists we should be having 10 million. In fact, uh, uh, London has nothing to show. London is blocks old places. They have 20 million tourists. We should be having 10 million tourists. It is my, it is, it is my, uh, my focus that in the next five years, I want to double the number of tourists coming to Kenya by 2027, 2028, and progressively do that. Why do I need tourists in Kenya? We need to create jobs for millions of young people in our country. We need, we need to create investment in Kenya. We need to make sure that uh, our farmers have a place to sell their food, their, their produce. This is why I am doing the visa free. It is not us versus them. We are looking after our own interest. And that is what, and that's what I'm doing. Let me also say the following. Um, um, Many people have asked me why I shouldn't uh, dissolve uh, a cabinet. You see, 
when you sit in the place that I sit, there are many things that you have to think about. And I have given my undertaking this morning, uh, this afternoon, sorry, that I am in the process of looking at how differently we can be able to reorganize government for it to deliver effectively, appropriately. And I have listed a number of interventions that I believe will take us to the next level added on to what we were doing. I have also uh, heard from uh, my good uh, sister who said that uh, what, about, what happens to the finance bill? Is it going to become law in 21 days? Uh, because that was the biggest beef. And why did I, why did I wait until it was too late. Let me answer it this way. First, let me say that the finance bill today was a victim of many falsehoods and propaganda. The finance bill today was meant to achieve very important things for the Republic of Kenya. Unfortunately, I gave in because the people of Kenya had decided they do not want it, which is okay. But was there a problem with the finance bill? I would want a honest interrogation of the finance bill. For example, it was said that the finance bill had matters to do with increasing uh, money for, uh, for, for land rates and land rent and changing the whole configuration. Let me tell you, there is no single sentence in the finance bill that speaks to land rents and land issues. It was not true. It also says that we had put in there taxes that would make it difficult for people suffering from cancer. Let me tell you that in fact, in this finance bill, we have put there two, we had put there two billion shillings to pay for the people who have cancer, who have diabetes, who have uh, hypertension, because under our universal housing program. In this same bill, we had put interventions that would create more jobs. We had said, for example, we had said there is no need for us to import diapers, to import bumpers, to import linker, to import furniture from all manner of places when there are enough factories in Kenya to manufacture these products. And these products manufactured by Kenyans hiring Kenyan young people, building Kenyan wealth, we were protecting our own industries so that we can protect our own jobs and give opportunity to millions of young people, uh, to millions of, uh, of young people to be able uh, to understand, uh, to, to be able to get uh, uh, jobs. And also, let me just say this lastly, you know, potatoes. Good people, is it right for us to import potatoes from Europe or eggs or onions? We had put duty on importation of potatoes so that farmers in Yandarwa, in Timau, in uh, different parts of Kenya can sell their produce without competition from potatoes from elsewhere. These are some of the things that were in the finance bill. I admitted, which I do, that maybe we didn't do as much communication as we should have. And, and, that is a, and, and that is a regret that I have admitted. But I am willing, I am ready, I am here to listen. Let me not say more, let me do more listening. Well, Mr. President, sir, Nimzuri Tuongeokweli. Yes. There's one problem with you, Mr. President. You are not empathetic. Mr. President. time ya floods. Remember time ya floods? What you never even said a word. A week later on, we saw you on a plane, on a private plane to the US, carrying all sorts of people, unnecessary people to the US. You never said a word. Ukirudi bado nyumbani, to kanza mambo ya reject the finance bill kanyamaza tu uko na tunena maandamano you never said a word until watu wakaanza kuuliwa that's when you decided to reject the finance bill mr president surely mbona wewe unanyamaza alafu unapenda uongo sana unadu vitu vinafanyika when it gets out of hand 
alafu ndo naweza kuongea saizi tuna kuna watu wanazika watoto wao saizi vile tunaongea saizi hata kuna rafiki yangu saizi anazikwa saizi ni matanga hiyo hiki imekuwa ni matanga sababu ya maandamano but we are here thinking about the economy you are not even sympathetic to the families uja mention hata jina mtu mmoja kuna swali pia nilo mejibu sema about rongai you ask us kila mtu kwa space wanatoka from different regions in Nairobi in Kenya yeah rongai people are killed give the people are killed however the information you receive unadhani they, they tell you only one person was killed okay that's a life too they they do not feed you they do not feed you the actual the actual information so you are just weighing the death of people the number of people you just night kindiki was saying people are not killed was not aware people are not abducted you are just arrested some of us were arrested and your excuse is that the police unit is an independent body surely mr president what about when you leave alafu unasema police unit is independent alafu kato na uliwa excuse unasema the economy is growing how can Right now, the country is mourning. Properties worth of billions were banned. You have not addressed that. All you think about is the the, the foreign the foreign policy and the economic status of the country, not about the the livelihood the of the common manaji. Surely, Mr. President, we need you to be with you. Be empathetic. Your government should be empathetic. You should stop this issue of police brutality. That's that's what we want right now. Personally, the police came to my house at 3 a.m. They broke into my house. They, they refused to identify themselves. And that was it. We were abducted. It was like kidnapping. Mr. President, tulishikwa, They even stole some stuff from our house. Imagine askari anakuja. Akona bunduki anangia kwa nyumba. Akona mask. 12 of them with 12 cars arresting a single guy an armed citizen alafu kimwambia mbona anakuja kushika anakupiga in the meeting bado anachukua vitu kwa nyumba yako they even went to parkland police station that's where i was arrested the ocpd told the guys we know about this thing but will not make any will not take any action meaning it was very criminal the ocpd parkland police station ocpd deputy ocpd was very much aware what was going on we are not we were not booked in a, any single position we were taken in a certain house i think it was a safe house or something i was blindfolded some guys were blindfolded for like 12 hours surely mr president are we in a terrorist country we just want you to answer that okay this, this way we're in this space thank you very much my friend I, I regret your situation. If, if that is the kind of treatment you have gone through, I apologize. And I will take action in this manner. No Kenya. And I made a commitment uh, to the people of Kenya that there will be no extrajudicial killing. There will be no rivayala. There will be no, you know, we used to have 20, 30 bodies in the, in the Bayala. When I came into office, I said nothing of that is ever going to happen. And I want to promise the people of Kenya that that will, that will not happen under my watch. However, I have had the kind of horror you have gone through. That is not right. What I will do after this uh, engagement, I would like I don't know, in a very uh, 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 um, uh, secretive way, if you can send me the details of what happened, I will be able to take action because you don't, you don't deserve the kind of uh, treatment that you went through. Let me also say the following. You have talked about empathy. Maybe, you know, people are born differently. Maybe we, 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 we empathize in uh, different ways. Um, for the case of uh, the floods, I even convened a whole cabinet meeting to 
just respond to that matter of, of floods. Three cabinet meetings. My minister was on the ground. I was myself in, uh, 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 in Kiamaiko, in person. I came there in Kiamaiko. And for the first time, uh, my brother, for the first time, normally when people are removed from places, they are brutalized. They are removed and nobody cares about where they go. Nobody cares about what happens to them. For the first time in the history of Kenya, I made sure that every Kenya who was living in the riparian reserve was given money for alternative accommodation. We paid every Kenyan who left that place 10,000 shillings to be able to relocate away from the danger of the floods that were on the river. I mean, it was the, the best that I could do in that circumstance. And I promised them that under our housing program, because we now have their, 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 their list, under our housing program, we are going to be consider them the first beneficiaries of our social housing uh, program. I made that commitment in public. If you ask our peers for uh, housing, they already have the data on these Kenyans who were who were removed from uh, from from the riparian reserve who had to be relocated and relocated for their own safety. For your information, we lost many Kenyans who were sleeping there, but they were carried by the floods. And it was the best thing that I could do. I went there in person. My minister was there consistently. I had three different cabinet meetings to attend the issue. We committed close to 400 million to make sure that those Kenyans who were in that uh, situation were attended to. Maybe it wasn't enough. Maybe I should have done more. Maybe then I should apologize for not doing more. But in the best, to the best of my ability, it is the first time the government of Kenya is providing money to relocate people who have been uh, affected in situations like the one in, uh, in, in the flood. Okay, Mr. President, on the issue of Gidura, you said there was only one casualty, which is a lie. Mr. President, Gidura in a there were more than 200 people who were shot dead. Some when you are you can imagine what is it? You know, we are in Rongai. They shot some guys here. We are feature. We are going to be a Nani kweli reality kwa ground watu walikuwa wanaudiwa. Ina ni kweli watu walikuwa wanaudiwa. Tuliko huko wote tulikuwa maandamano. Alafu kuna issue nyingine. This this rock cop amekuwa kichapa watu risasi and chapa watu risasi open air kila mtu ana camera there. They decide does doesn't do anything about it. Amekuwa all over social media in the media but you don't even say a word about him. His name is Murangiri. That killer cop amekuwa watu Watu wanazikwa kila siku sababu yake. Juzi ilikuwa last last week Wednesday nilikuwa town. Nilimwona akitembea tu town vizuri along Moyo Avenue very happy very healthy. He's a killer cop. Nothing has been done to him. Hivi tu tumekuwa complaint au kitambo. For how long should we be talking about this? About the killer cops. Um Sorry. You can go ahead, Mr. President. Uh, my good brother, you know, it is good to be brutally honest. And I will not, as president or even as a Kenyan, ever say anything that is not factual, especially on a very serious matter of people losing lives. Are you saying? 200 people were killed in Kidurai. Really? I mean, my friend, I mean, where, where, where are the, can the family step forward? Where people who are saying our members of our family are missing. They, 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 they went to Mandamanu or they went to Piquet and they did not come back. 200 people is not a joke my friend. So I, I really want to plead with you. you. I am sorry to tell you 
you have wrong numbers. I am I'm sorry to tell you that. It is it's not, not really possible. We even have the names. It's all over social media. What about social media? I want to offer you. I want to offer you. I want to offer you. We have the Tomorrow, and the I want to offer you. I want to offer you to bring the names and family members of the people who are saying their loved ones are not there. Don't even take them anywhere. Bring them to state house. Them family members who are saying, "I have lost so and so." I, I, my, my fellow, uh, I, I, my, a member of my family was there on Monday last week. He went to Mandamano and he didn't come back. And where, um, and where possibly are the bodies? You know? So, so I mean, really, my, my good friend, it is, it is just good to be, you know, we, we are dealing with a very serious issue. Please let us not use information that is not verified. It, it just helps to create a situation that is not correct. Mr. President, I have another question too. Kindiki yesterday. Mr. President, Jana Kindiki Alisema, guys who are being arrested, not abducted. When a guy is arrested, it means the area police station or the area, area OCS OCPD is aware. When I was arrested, Parkland's deputy OCPD was not aware, meaning, meaning these abductions are very illegal, right? Let, let, let me say the following eh, on, on matters of abduction. You know, uh, fact, let us agree fact that the era of extrajudicial killing is no longer with us. There is a new problem called abduction. And it is something that I am going to exercise my mind on because the police have clear rules of how to arrest citizens if they have to arrest citizens. There is a clearly stipulated procedure on how that is done. And if anything is done outside the procedure, then it is illegal and it is punishable. So um, uh, when the police arrest somebody, they, they must they must declare to that person that they are policemen, they are, they are arresting this person for this and that and that and that, and they take him to a place that is known. So that is a matter that I will take up and I will uh, deal with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Otero, to Kona, but to Liza Maswali, no, no, me, me, as a, when you Otero, so no, I'm over to Davania, but for you to get a chance. Uh, we okay. have we'll take, three, we'll, take, <laughs> we'll take three people, three at a time faster. Uh, we have, uh, I'll bring in Alai, followed by Idi, followed by Gray, and then you can give Wakilia for that four. So again, Hussein, I really don't think Alai should speak. Because his, his comments will be biased. This space is basically about what we are going through in the street. Allah doesn't know about it. In, in short, Allah is a young man. I really don't think Allah can speak for himself. We can't, we can't uh, limit anybody from speaking. Everybody has the freedom to speak here. No, no, Allah is very bad. So, uh, thank you. Let's have a discussion. Allah is can speak. But Allah no, he has not been against this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Otero. <laughs> I've been I've been an advocate of freedoms for a very long time, especially when we don't agree. So I'd ask you to learn that lesson that you should listen to people, especially when they don't agree with you. And that's what the president is trying to do here. We don't agree with him, and that's why we want him to listen to us and he agreed to come to the space. And moving forward, I, I, I really want to tell the president that Mr. President, you know that your success is our success, and we really want you to succeed. The problem is that I don't know if you really want yourself to succeed as a president of Kenya. Because from the moment you got to be the president, there are things you did which I think just sabotaged your presidency. When you decided to say that you are not going to listen to intern doctors, I said, does the president know what he's doing? Because he's touching the hearts of Kenyans. These are the people who spend most of their time in public hospitals. When the president didn't take up the matter of pending bills and tell the courts
churches, Mr. President, I think you sabotage your own presidency. And that's why I ask myself that the president really tells us that he wants, he, he means well for the country. But is he really meaning well for himself? Because unless somebody else is the president who is doing all these things, the, 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 the second and last question, because I don't want to spend more time, I'm an elected official in Nairobi, Mr. President, is the issue of uh, Nairobi on source revenue, which we have asked, we have investigated, we have been taken around, Marit was KRA, which is collecting that money, we have taken to the office of the president, uh, finally we are told that it's being collected in state house by some agency, we can't get, I'm the vice chairman of ICT in Nairobi City County Assembly. But nobody knows who is collecting the revenue for Nairobi City County, Mr. President. It really saddens me because if that revenue was collected in a transparent and verifiable manner, then you know, Mr. President, some of these bills would be taken up by the counties and it will not come to you in the national government so as to pay those bills, Mr. President. Those are the, those are the only questions which I had. Thank you. Thank you, Alai. Edith? Yeah, thank you for the chance to ask a question. Edith, Hello. are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, let's go to Gray if Edith is not responding. Hello, hello, hello. Right, thank you so much. Hello. Hussein. This is Grayson. Hussein, can you hear me? Oteruna Niskia. I can I can hear Eddie and I can hear uh, uh, the other gentleman. I'd like to ask my all question right, if you can all hear. Okay, me. let's have one person speak. Uh, Gray, Gray, speak. All right, thank you so much, Hussein. Uh, Eddie, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Your Excellency, my name is Grace Onmaro. Uh, my question to you is one, and my question is on this very, very emotive and very, you know, uh, topic that we love talking about as a country, which is corruption. I know you are stand on corruption. You have spoken about it many times. You know, you don't condone corruption. You don't want corruption to happen in your government. But then I want to point out something. Uh, recently, there was a scandal, uh, you know, with the fertilizer and the CS was, you know, uh, impeached or a motion was tabled in the National Assembly by a member of parliament for him to be impeached. But what happened later is that, you know, the same, same members of parliament from your political party, the UDO party, went ahead and saved this particular cabinet secretary. What does that speak, you know, to your stand regarding corruption? Do you support corruption on one hand, but on the other hand, because he is your CS, these are your members of parliament, you know, they go ahead and, and you know, flop that motion that was supposed to impeach this particular uh, cabinet secretary. My last question, as a young person, there is a challenge of jobs in this country. But a month ago or so, in the dailies, there was a freeze that the public service is not hiring anymore. What are you trying to tell young people, yet you say each and every day you want to ensure that we give jobs to these young people who go to school but don't have jobs out here? People are, you know, forced to do things that they shouldn't be doing and they went through the education system. If I can get a response to those two issues, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Grayson, do I answer? Do I answer? Do I answer those, or I thought we said we take three people? Can can we take maybe Eddie? Eddie was somewhere. There is a lady called Eddie was somewhere or something. Edith Kimani. Otero, from my end, I see she's a listener. Maybe you can add her to speak from what I'm able to see on my end. Okay. As we wait As we for, wait for uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, can, can, can I proceed and answer? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Alai has mentioned uh, three things. Mr. Alai, I, I want to tell you, uh, Mishmiwa, that um, I am acutely clear that even if I don't succeed, I want Kenya to succeed. The one thing that 
I am very clear about is what do we do to change the status of many Kenyans? Intern doctors. There was a long conversation with intern doctors. I made sure that they were attended to. We have, I met the leadership of the, of the intern doctors myself, finally, and we did make an agreement on how to sort out the intern doctor situation, including, I have factored in this budget with their concurrence, when I agreed with them, that we were supposed to set out, to sort out, sorry, their, um, their arrears in three years. I offered to sort them out in one year after I engaged, uh, after I engaged with them. And the money is in the budget. As I talked to you, I have even today uh, decided that even with a cut of uh, the finance bill, I will still uh, make sure that uh, they, they, they are sorted out. The issue of pending bills. You know, uh, my good brother, we have pending, pending bills in the region of 650 billion. It is the reason why I appointed Mr. Ouko, our former Auditor General, to interrogate all the pending bills for purposes of making sure that we can pay them. In fact, one of the items that I, I listed this afternoon, which was also in the budget, is a provision for us to begin the journey to sort out pending bills because it is crippling businesses of people, it is destroying enterprises of Kenyans because government is not paying. The third thing that you have said about Linda, Linda Mama or Linda Jamie and Eduardia, I have done three things. Maybe uh, the, the explanation. Let me give you that explanation. On, on Linda Mama. Uh, is, are you, are you, am, I, am I audible? Yes, you are, Mr. President. Sorry about that. What we are doing is under our universal health coverage, I promise the people of Kenya that we need to ensure that we don't leave other Kenyans behind. Under our universal health coverage, in which this, this, this year we now have a budget for it, we are going to scale up the benefits of Linda Mama. That is why we have brought it, we have scaled it up into universal health coverage. We want it to reach more Kenyans. That's number one. Number two, we want to enhance the benefits. The benefits were 2,500 for women giving birth in, uh, in, 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 uh, in hospital, in, in smaller hospitals, 5,000 and maximum of 17,000. We have now changed that. From 2,500, we have moved the benefit to 11,000. And we have moved the upper benefit to 32,000. That is not a derogation. That is an upgrading of Linda Mama. Number two, Edu Afia. What we are doing with Edu Afia is that we are universalizing. The uh, uh, universal health is universalizing insurance so that every Kenyan, and you know, I, I, I made this absolutely clear, and that is why. We have changed the law so that not just the students who are in school, but every Kenyan, who, even those who are not in school, will now ha be beneficiaries of, 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 uh, of, of our shift, uh, social health. We, instead of having NHIF, we are now going to have that uh, universal health is available to uh, many Kenyans. Finally, on uh, Nairobi, on source of revenue. I thought I had the governor say the other day that he had increased it, to, uh, he had raised more revenue than was ever raised. I'm not sure about that. But I want to tell you that that is a Nairobi County affair. You, Mr. Alai, should not be asking me. The public should be asking you. <laughs> Because you are the person, you are the person responsible, you are the, the representative of the people. You should answer that question 
You should be the one to interrogate the county government. It is your responsibility of oversight. It is your responsibility of representation. It is your responsibility of legislation. You should legislate how the county resources are, uh, are raised. You should oversight the county government to collect it. I just want you to take up your job and do it. Let me, as uh, Gray Marwa has asked me two very important questions. Marwa, these are very important questions about corruption. Let me say the following, just three things first. Number one, I said before that corruption must be dealt with firmly and decisively. And that is why my, my act number one in office, the two acts that I did in office when I came into office was number one, to make sure that I give financial autonomy to the police so that they can pursue corruption to the extent possible, and that they don't have to come back to me, and nobody in my office will control the police in as to who they want to prosecute. That's number one. And I signed, and the budget of the police is run by the IG at the moment, and they are free to go after everybody. That's number one. Number two, I made sure that the judges that had been denied the opportunity to serve and to empower our uh, judiciary. I signed them and I, and I, and I made sure that uh, they have been gazetted and they went to work. I did not stop there. I have enhanced the budget of the judiciary from 18 billion to this year. I wanted to be at 25 billion. Unfortunately, it may come down because of the finance bill by about a billion or so. Number three, I am the president who has sworn in the highest number of judges in Two years in the history of Kenya. We have, I have sworn in maybe 46, almost 50 judges because I have agreed with the judiciary that justice delayed is justice denied. And therefore, I want to uh, make sure um, uh, that th that that becomes uh, the case. Number, number, number four, on the specific incident of what happened with fertilizer, I want to tell you as I tell the people of Kenya, those where evidence has been gathered, sufficient evidence has been gathered, they are in court. The CEO, the general manager, and seven other staff of the National Cereals and Produce Board are already in court. The minister was taken to parliament to answer for political responsibility, that to make sure that he, he, his oversight role was in question. I want to tell you this, uh, Gray, that we are a country of the rule of law. When a person has been, uh, um, when, when allegations are made against a person and they are not verified, there is no way that such person can be held to account. But when they are verified, like the case of the officers who worked under the minister that were verified, they are in court. I want to tell you, if a minister, if a principal secretary, if there are verified allegations of corruption against any cabinet minister and or any principal secretary, the day they are taken to court, I will find them. I will not wait for the court process because there will be an element of confirmation that these are people who are corrupt. Let me talk about jobs. And you have said correctly, that the public service has issued um, a circular that there will be, uh, there is a freeze on jobs. The public service has a freeze on jobs at different levels. People who are employed at entry level and the space around jobs is huge. Government can only hire a very small fraction. My intention, my plan, is to make sure that government facilitates the economy, facilitates the private sector, facilitates the entire enterprise space to create more jobs. It is the reason why I made a deliberate commitment to the people of Kenya when I went for the elections, and I said I will focus on creating jobs. 
And if you want me to explain to you the areas where I am focused on creating jobs, I will. If you want me to tell you how many jobs I have created in the two years that I have been in office, I will tell you from housing, from digital jobs, from uh, going to manufacturing, all the way to export of labor. I will tell you how many jobs I have, I have created. And I have every intention to make sure that as many Kenyans as possible have an opportunity to have an income so that they can contribute meaningfully to the development of our country. Thank you. Then you can speak. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for this chance uh, to maybe ask some few questions to the uh, president. Uh, I'll be very brief. I only have three questions to make. One, uh, Mr. President, is that, uh, like most of the people have said, is that your government is full of lies. Because of one, uh, one I want to put it clear that when uh, Finance Bill 2023 was passed, um, we believe that the revenue that was going to be collected during that period were going to be used for development. Personally, I come from a Masab constituency. And on February of last year, the CS for Transport uh, Bonamur Komen came to Kabiet Shrines and promised us that there is a road down there that's going to down from Kurgung to Chepter way coming down to Kapkatembu. He said personally that since that this is a road that was left midway by the contractor, he was going to send the contractor in a record three months to be on site so that the road can continue. Uh, with the, the, so the contractor can start the, the construction. Up to now, we still do, we still haven't seen that. So that basically tells you that that is a liar. Number two, uh, I think um, the Gray has talked about uh, the issue of uh, fertilizer. You've said, uh, Mr. President, that if they, if you find that there is a case against the said minister, you're going to fire him. There is a case that has been filed by the Law Society of Kenya against the, the Minister of Agriculture. If kindly, we can st tell the minister to step aside so that, uh, you know, trying to investigate someone who is in office becomes very hard. So let the minister step aside so that we can continue with the investigation. Number three, I would want to talk about the arrogance. The arrogance that is in your government. I have heard uh, Mr. President uh, say, you say that uh, the issue of uh, Finance Bill 2024 was, I think it was packaged in a way that Maybe you should have done it better. Yes, you should have done it better. The reason being, the people you sent out there, since the, like the MP for Molo, on the issue of, uh, the, the, of, 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 of the motor vehicle levy, at some point in the TV, he told people that, you know, if you cannot be able to pay that, just leave your vehicle at home. That is the arrogance that, you displayed, that was being displayed. The leader of majority in parliament, Kimani Nishungwa, even went out on a podium, said that, you know, that these are the Gen Zs, they come with the phones, they go to KFC, they go, and then they come with an Uber. That is the arrogance that, that fueled all this anger that you're seeing in people. And then lastly, uh, on the issue of, uh, I come from, uh, you know, this generally this region of Wasingishu and maybe Nandi and Wasingishu, there was an issue of the Finland uh, scam that happened. There's a case in court, parents paid for the money, the case is dragging in court. So actually, what you saw in Elred, I think it's more of, it's, it wasn't even more finance bill. It's, it's the anger that, that has been building up, it's been building up. So people were, were really ang angry because they've paid, people sold their land, the issues are still there, nobody's uh, talking about, we have a case that is in court. It can drag to five years. So what happens with the money that has been lost that someone was going to go to school tomorrow or ne by next year, maybe they would have graduated. So I think those are the issues that I have. Uh, I want you to address in regards to uh, the, the areas that I have mentioned. Thank you. Wakili Saroni can speak. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, 
uh, your excellency for this opportunity to address you and uh, thank you very much the host hussein and uh, osama um my name is uh, uh jesse saruni or rather uh, wakili saruni i am uh, the president of uh, university students in kenya kuso and uh, your excellency i have a few concerns eh? but uh, first allow me to give you a background of uh, why in my opinion i feel comrades were very uh, disturbed about the finance bill uh, um, your excellency if you look at the finance bill 2023 2024 it introduced housing levy at around uh, 3% which was to be redeemable however d uh, during public participation the people uh, most of the people including comrades said that uh, we can start at 1.5 percent but uh, without communication the parliament went ahead and uh, reviewed and uh, let, made it to be 1.5 percent but they removed the clause that allowed people to redeem the uh, the savings after they retire your excellency i would uh, wish to hear from you whether this it can be reverted so that this can be redeemable but uh, as i continue your excellency i was uh, part of your team during the campaign and uh, one of the things that we uh, we were saying during the campaign because i act act actively campaigned using the kenya kwanza manifesto was uh, the 30% of appointments of youth in different uh, uh, positions, and including a youth, youth advisor to the cabinet. However, Your Excellency, currently we have an advisor to the cabinet on uh, women affairs, but we do not have an advisor to the cabinet on youth affairs. I was concerned whether this was uh, deliberately left out, or uh, I was just a little bit concerned with that. Your Excellency, another key concern that uh, affects comrades, around 6,000 graduates went through diploma in law, and this is in regard to career progression. So they did their diploma in law, and uh, they proceeded to do their degree in law. Your Excellency, before uh, 2014, everyone who did their diploma and did their degree in law were able to proceed to the Kenya School of Law for the ATP uh, uh, Advocates Training Program. But uh, the laws were changed in 2014, and this affects around 6,000 university students who are working in uh, law firms and getting underpaid. And I am uh, happy to see that uh, the president of LSK, who is very passionate about uh, issues of youth, is also here. Uh, Your Excellency, there is an amendment bill in parliament that is on the speaker's desk and has stayed for so long. Your Excellency, this is something that is under the office of the Attorney General. And uh, with the indulgence of uh, the Attorney General, I believe this thing can be, uh, we can find a multi, uh, 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 an approach where this thing can be addressed, of course, through the office of the Attorney General, so that these comrades can stop their suffering. They are not able to proceed um, uh, to self-actualization because most of them would want to become advocates of the high court but they are not able due to that change in uh, in the act uh, of parliament your excellency another concern is on students and youth leadership wakili i really i really hate to do this but please please we've only gone through five questions i think there are so many people on attack who listen okay to just one more kindly we agreed with uh, uh, yeah please kindly. okay um uh, your Excellency, in regards to university um, students and youth leadership, um, you can see that the, we have the National Youth Council, which uh, is uh, as constituted. It's supposed to hold elections. And uh, I feel, Your Excellency, the youth feel that uh, they have not been able for a, a long time to represent their grievances because they are not able to elect uh, their leaders directly. And this goes back even to the University Amendment Act, which introduced the delegate system, which I feel that uh, the universities have found a way to maneuver so that they elect, they make sure that the students who are elected are students who they uh, can uh, be able to maneuver and manipulate. Your Excellency, um, finally, on the issue of branding, uh, the projects that uh, our members of parliament and all other people has uh, the aspect of uh, has the aspect of uh, when the projects are complete people tend to brand 
their names on these uh, projects. Your Excellency, these projects are financed by uh, taxpayers, and it is the request of the young people and the youth that uh, when it comes to branding, we would rather have these projects branded that they have been financed by the Kenyan taxpayer. I will uh, leave it at that, Your Excellency, and uh, thank you very much. But of course, there is the issue of mental health. I appreciate we cannot exhaust all these things uh, in one sitting, but I'm looking forward uh, to more engagements in other platforms. Um, thank you very much, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. The final question of the three the ex councillor Good evening, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. My first request to the host and the co-host, please do not give the elected uh, people the Excellent. chance to speak, one of them a lie and me. You can hear me, Osama? Can you save yes, the time? Ahead, Ele elected MPs, elected, any elected official should not take this chance apart from the president. So thank you very much for the time. I have two things. I don't want to repeat a lot of things. I'm saying the meantime, the I just have a pile of questions. Mr. Number one. Mr. President, see what I could do. Number one. You ask Gary Mamukaki or what to command. I want to ask you what to do. I'm going freely. Tango, last month, I'm going to all over the city. I'm going to ask you what to do. 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 I'm going to Okay, he will answer. He will answer that plus plus uh, councillor councillor. Videos of you saying the same thing. You had to find a way of not uh, listening to those videos. The one thing that you promised us, one of them, is corruption. You have people around you. You've addressed this one. It's going to, you can't tell me out of the 100 people you have around you, 90% are corrupt or have story of corruption and you are doing nothing about them. Of, bill of millions, 300 millions, another 900 million today, disappearing to wrong or fake claims. I'm wondering, is the change from uh, NHF to SHIF, will it improve or just another way to get more money for people around your circle? to buy houses, buy big cars, and laugh at us. Now, Mr. President, Ex in the you are here to those, are, those are about two questions. Now let's let's have the president answer. We don't have a lot of time. We have to not wingy. They need to ask questions to the president. Please let the president respond to that. If we get a chance, another chance with Ulysses Oswali. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, good people. Uh, let me start with uh, the gentleman. I didn't get his name from a soap. And that gentleman says, um, uh, we have uh, too many lies flying all over the place. Let me let me just state. Let me just put it uh, clearly. So many people have spread this story about William Ruto not telling the truth or uh, making uh, fake promises. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that there will be a hustler fund. Today there is a hustler fund that takes care of two million Kenyans. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that fertilizer is going to come down. It has come down from 7,000 to 2,500. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that we will have a housing program. Today, 103,000 houses are being built with 160,000 young people, real people, engineers, architects, uh, quality surveyors, plumbers, you know, uh, technicians working. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that we are going to sort out matters in the education sector. Today, we have hired the highest number of teachers in Kenyan history in one time, 56,000 teachers. I made a commitment that I am going to sort out the mess that was in our universities. Today, ask any vice chancellor. With our new funding model, we have sorted out the challenge that was there in our universities. Today, lecturers are being paid. No university today is about to close down. When I came into office, most universities were teetering on being closed because of debts. I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that I am going to implement universal health coverage. Today, as I talk to you, we have 100 
thousand community health promoters in every village in Kenya that I pay, that I have equipped to begin the journey towards universal health coverage. As I talk to you today, there are four pieces of legislation that we have implemented, or that we have uh, we have enacted to actualize universal health coverage. I can go on, I can go on, and I can tell you, I every commitment that I made, I said I am going to appoint the judges that were not there, I did. I said I'm going to operationalize uh, the fund for the police, independent police, I did. I said I am going to do to enhance the budget of the judiciary, I did. You know, when people want to conveniently say a few things that propagate a, a, a certain narrative, it is easy. But let me that, let me leave that there. Let me um, go back to uh, your um, the Mosop Kurgu uh, story. I want to tell you, my good brother, we have stalled roads in Kenya. In fact, the budget, the debt we have on roads is 910 billion because we rolled out a program that we didn't have money to do. It is what is troubling me now. It is why I am, I, many people are asking me, why are you outside the country? I went to China, for example, and I got 40 billion shillings to do at least eight roads that were stalled. I have uh, come back from the US and we have had a consultation and we, we are getting money to be able to roll out some of our roads, courtesy of uh, 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 confessional funding from the World Bank. I have had conversations with the president of, uh, of, uh, of, of Germany and they are giving us uh, money under the same program to be for us to be able to meet some of our programs. I want to tell uh, my good friend from Osop that we have focused on these areas. These roads did not stall yesterday. These roads have stalled for a while. We are figuring out how to make sure that we deal with that situation. And my apologies that maybe uh, the minister did not keep his word. And uh, I'm going to remind him. Let me do the following on fertilizer. I want to agree with you on this subject of fertilizer first. Let me say this. Fertilizer has made a very big difference in Kenya. Because of our program on fertilizer, we have managed to increase our food productivity. For example, on maize alone, from 44 million bags to 67 million bags last year. We, today, this year, we are going to pay the highest bonus ever in Kenyan history for our tea. In fact, our tea production, because of the support we gave PTDA, has increased from last year, it was 180 billion shillings that we collected from our tea. This year, it's going up to 210 billion. On coffee, the average payment of coffee last year was in the region of 70, 80. As I talk to you now, because we supported our, our, our tea farmers, the average payment for our, our coffee is in the region of between 100, 120, in some very good cases, 129 shillings per kilo. The whole array of what we have done with fertilizer is phenomenal. And therefore, I understand when somebody like my friend from Morsop gets annoyed, when there are people who want to sabotage a program that is making a very big difference in Kenya. And that is the reason why I didn't delay one minute when this issue of uh, fake fertilizer came into, 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 into the public. All the officials that were involved in it at the National Cereals and Produce Board were charged. When the minister is finally, when there is evidence gathered enough for the minister to be uh, held to account if there is uh, sufficient uh, evidence to, to, to hold um, anybody accountable. Arrogance. I agree with you that not everybody understands communication. Let me tell you, uh, my good friend from Mosop, the day you become a public speaker, you will know how easy it is to make a mistake in the public. Sometimes you say things that you did not mean, but it comes out 
very badly. So uh, uh, whether it is the member of parliament for Molo, the member for parliament for Molo is a young man. I can tell you that young man is doing his very best. In fact, when I made him the chair of finance committee, many people told me he was too young. I shouldn't have made him. But I wanted to test also young people. And I wanted to mentor young people. And I want to say, he has made mistakes. But I want to tell you, that young man is bright. He has a bright future. He made mistakes. I will apologize for him. Maybe he, he said what he shouldn't have said. But they are among the young people I am mentoring so that they can become leaders tomorrow. Same case with uh, my, my friend Kimani Ishunwa. In fact, after he made that statement in, uh, I think it was uh, maybe in Baringo or somewhere, I called him. I told him, look, this is not how to engage the public. If you follow the next, the next day, he had managed to correct his statement and he had done, you know, an about turn of some sort. Because let me tell you, uh, my good friend from Osop, I have also one duty as a leader in Kenya. I have a duty to mentor other leaders. They will make mistakes. They will demonstrate, you know, maybe some arrogance, maybe either inadvertently or, or, or in whatever manner. But uh, partly, you know, it's because of inexperience, partly because uh, of uh, not a fair understanding of things. But I, I, I sometimes will want to take responsibility because these are members of my team and I will correct them. Let me also say about uh, what you said about uh, the Finland story in Eldoret. It is really unfortunate that people sold property, land, you know, uh, livestock for their children to go to Finland. You know, I, I wish I could go to court and tell the court to jail these people. Unfortunately, there is something called rule of law. There is something called Think that there would be a matter. But these are people who have been arre arrested. They are, as I talked to you, presently in court. They are being taken through due process. And I am very confident that if they are guilty, the law is going to deal with them. Let me go to Saruni. Uh, um, you, you said about uh, the 1.5. It is true. There was a proposal of 3%. The public told us that we do not want a levy. If you want, collect a tax, reduce it to 1.5. So both reduction to 1.5 and changing to a tax was actually coming from public participation. This is what the public said. If the public are going to make a different uh, suggestion going forward, we will respect what the public uh, will have said going into uh, the future. Am I still uh, audible? Are you, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Let, yes, me, yes, let yes. me, let me, let me, let me say this. Um, I agree with you, uh, my friend, that um, uh, I, I said that I would have an advisor in my office for young people. But maybe uh, I did something different. I gave many young people. If you go to parliament, if you look at the leader of Senate, if you look at the leader of many committees in parliament, I made young, young people. If you look at my deputy controller of, of, of state house, these are young people. I decided to have more cabinet, sec more principal secretaries. If you look at the profile of my principal secretaries, you have people in their thirties, many of them serving sub in substantive positions. In fact, many people were asking me, um, whether these girls, you know, some of them look like they are, uh, or these boys, whether they can be principal secretaries. And I'm very proud of them. They are doing a wonderful job. But that is something I will consider, Saruni, that uh, as way of keeping a promise, I think that is something I need to consider. And thank you very much for your feedback. Let me also say on the matter of uh, um, the, the law that is uh, bringing problems to 6,000 diploma uh, law students who, uh, because of a law in 2014, I will take it up with the AG. Ordinarily, you know, professional organizations like, uh, like the legal fraternity 
are normally regulated by professional bodies like the LSK and all the others. If we get a recommendation from the LSK to the Attorney General, I will be able to facilitate and make sure that we don't is uh, enfranchise 6,000 people in Kenya who have undergone training and who need to practice law in the way they want to do. I agree with you that um, there has been a problem of with the Kenya Youth Council. We need to deal with it. And I have told uh, Ababu Namwamba, my minister for uh, young people, to look at whether we have the right forum. You know, the problem with the uh, Youth Council, it has always looked like it is a government agent. We want to make sure that it doesn't look like a government corporation or a government agency. We want it to be a young people's organization in a way that government influence and government um, uh, intervention is limited so that the young people can speak for themselves. I would welcome ideas, uh, Saruni, from university leadership on how we can make the Youth Council better, more democratic, and more representative of, uh, of the young people. I couldn't agree with you more on this branding issue. I see faces of people all over the place on government projects that have been done. Uh, this, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I think it is made to look like they did it with their own money. I agree with you that this branding, if it costs public money, it should stop. And it is feedback that I am going to take in to see to it that no public money is used to paint people's uh, uh, photo on government projects. Um, let me answer ex-counselor. I'm told he's ex-counselor, but he's also a doctor. This is good. I didn't know that uh, an ex-counselor, uh, ex like a doctor can be an ex-counselor, but that is good. He has asked me about um, the NHIF and the transition to shift. Let me tell my brother, uh, I didn't get his name, that the reason why we are shifting from NHIF to shift is because NHIF is limited. NHIF only uh, captures a small section of our society. It is my intention, as I made a commitment to the public, that every Kenyan must have two things, must have access to healthcare and must have access to health insurance. We must make sure that those people, even those who cannot afford NHIF, because there are many people who cannot, who cannot afford the 500 we are paying at the moment. And that is why we have brought in a means testing system so that the people who cannot afford the, the 500, we have now reduced it to 300 under the new program. And even those who cannot afford 300, the government of Kenya is going to pay for them so that no Kenyan will go to hospital, whether they are suffering from hypertension or cancer or diabetes or whatever. Either they get uh, treatment because uh, level one, two, and uh, three are free, or they can go to a referral hospital and there is an insurance system. Who shift that is, that's a social insurance that is going to make sure that uh, uh, their bills are paid. So, and let me tell you, one very important addition to this program is a digital health platform. The biggest problem we have had in NHIF is the digitization process. We lose a lot of money because of collusion between hospitals and staff at NHIF. In fact, you saw in the public media that there are hospitals that have more accountants than medical officers because they are gaming the, 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 the system. We have now standardized all tariffs. There is no way you can be treated by malaria in one hospital and you pay a thousand and treated for malaria in another hospital and pay 100. We have standardized, whether it is public, whether it is private hospital, we have now standardized treatment. That is what happens world over in countries that, uh, that, that, that understand how to manage uh, mother's, mother's health. 
So this is a comprehensive program. It is one program that will change the face of Kenya. Kenyans will no longer have to sell their land, sell their property to go and pay for hospital bills. We will all of us stop these harambes and the public collections that we are collecting to go and deal with people. So my good friend, this is the plan. We have gone through it with parliament. We have enacted four pieces of legislation. It was my plan to launch it on the first of this month. Unfortunately, because of the challenges we've gone through with the finance bill, we have shifted it to begin 1st of October, but the process of registration has already started. I think we are on day, uh, on day four, and already over 100,000 Kenyans have been registered. So, and I want to encourage all Kenyans to register so that we can be able to plan for our health together as the people of Kenya. And we can even plan for our health commodities and we can be able to uh, secure everybody from matters illness. Thank you very much. Not finish my questions. So as I continue, I know, but my main point is corruption, whether it's an HF or chief, I told you 300 million paid to fake claims around nine and nine million today early in the morning this will this stop in the new system is that since you came into power now two years ago the only thing you keep mentioning is the price of Unga going down and the housing project which we do know very well will not be occupied with the common monetia uh, uh, like me so do we have another project that you can always tell us the things you promise a lot of things from police killings yeah that things are happening. Which one are you going to address other than the two of press of Unga and uh, housing? Now, in the in the police thing, there's somebody, as Osama has told you, you have not addressed, Osama was asking, there's a police that killed somebody, is believed to have killed the first uh, Rex, the first death of the protests, still roaming. Yesterday, the other day was seen in a video shooting directly to a crowd. I didn't see the end of the bullets. I cannot tell the crowd to a wall. What is happening to this? When are these people getting arrested? Why is the, what is the CI doing about them? Why is it that the, the nobodies are getting arrested, are in court in no, in very few days, but then the big the big boys are just sitting somewhere eating the my, our, our taxes? What are you doing about them? What the, what is the direction to address this issue? Thank you. So and also if you, if you notice that if you notice something in the pattern, there are the last mandamano, the the recent one that was full of goons. How come in the first four? First of all, there were no this violence. But then there is the last one, with coffin in town and police entertaining, police entertaining these people dropping uh, the coffin from the lorry, as well as seeing parking them back in the lorry in the evening. It's clear that somebody was behind this and the police could not touch the very people that were doing this. But when it was another person with a phone and a bottle of water, they get shot, they get tear gassed. What is happening? What are you, why do you speak A and do C? What instruction are you giving to the police? Yesterday I saw that you are praising the police for having done a good job professionally. Well, people died. What what are we praising here? What can are we are we looking at? So can we just match the word with the action? We've been talking too much. We see you on TV every day. We, we now we're on space. When when are we getting to see action? Let me give space for other people. Thank you. Also, the, Mr. President, have you tried to reach the families of those who were shot dead by the police or injured by the police, even a single one? Have you tried to reach even, even the amount of those? Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, speak to two of the things that you have. Yes, I have tried to reach out uh, to Kennedy Onyango's mother, Jessica Onyango. And in fact, I am scheduled to... Uh, uh, engage with them. I have already sent a message and... Uh, they were not available, uh, but they know that I have been uh, looking for them and uh, they, they, I will be spoke, speaking to them shortly. On the matter of this rogue police officer that you say is roaming, that is something that I would get. I would want to get exact details of who this is. And I can tell you that we will apprehend him and deal with him in accordance with the law. But let me answer also we'll send what you, my friend... We'll send you video pictures. Pardon? Pardon? 
if you're having a difficult locating the, the the police, we have videos and pictures of them. Okay. So please, that should be easy. Please forward uh, the picture and uh, and 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 uh, photos to me, to Hussein, my uh, spokesman here, and also I would appreciate if you can send send it to also my inbox if you if you can or if you can send it to uh, the. Uh, independent police oversight authority we will we will deal with it but let me also respond to you about matters corruption i want to promise you that part of the pushback we had on implementing our universal health coverage that is why they went to every court available trying to sabotage this program because they know that they will be out of business once we roll out this program because there will be there will be no room for them to hide. It is also the reason why, my good friend, I am digitizing government services because I want to reduce the interaction between Kenyans and officers who sometimes ask for, for bribes left, right, and center. I want Kenyans to access public service from the comfort of their offices or their phones or their homes. But let me speak to uh, the subject of uh, corruption in that matter. Number one, we will operate a digital system through and through. Whether it is with KEMSA, we are digitizing KEMSA, we are digitizing commodity uh, uh, distribution, we are digitizing um, matters to do with uh, the, the whole all health hospitals. In fact, the program that is going on now, we have grouped hospitals into PCNs, where we are grouping a number of hospitals into one PCN in every sub-county, so that we can identify where these uh, where, where these hospitals are, and we are working uh, with the counties. I know you have said that the only thing I talk about is Unga and housing. Let me also tell you, uh, the whole housing plan is not just about houses, my brother. It is about real people, real jobs. Jobs in our industries that manufacture cement, jobs in our industries that manufacture uh, steel, jobs in our industries that manufacture clinker, jobs uh, engineers, architects, accountants, HR managers, and many people who are working in that ecosystem. And beyond that, let me also tell you, my manifesto is a five-year manifesto. What you are doing, you, you, uh, what I am doing now is a cut. There will be an exam in five years, and and I will tell you when I do the exam in five years, you will you you will see the results. Number two, beyond what I am doing on uh, on 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 the space of jobs around housing, we are all, I am actively doing a big program on digital jobs. I was in Ruiru the other day launching with CCI, a digital hub that is going to, that is hiring, as I talk to you today, 5,000 Kenyans in Ruiru. I challenge you, you can go to Ruiru tomorrow, to CCI, you will find them working. And they are not the only ones. We have 140,000 Kenyans today who are working in different parts of Kenya, in TVETs, in ICT hubs, who are not working before I came to office. Today they are working because I have a very clear plan on digital jobs. When I talk in my manifesto, using our power lines across Kenya and in this year's budget, I had set uh, money to work with the, with, the, with the constituencies, with members of parliament, to make sure that there is an ICT hub in every, every ward can have access to the internet, to, uh, to, to computers, and to make sure that uh, these young people are trained and they can have access to a digital platform where they can work. 
as I talk to you, listen to me carefully, 149 to be exact, thousand young people. But I've had uh, a good sister there say, what is the president doing in Germany? What was the president doing in, uh, in, 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 uh, in America? I want to explain to her uh, simply, what was the president doing in France? We are signing 19 new bilateral labor agreement. That will give an opportunity for Kenyans who want to work abroad. Yes, I'm talking about accountants. Um, and I have now begun the process of professionalizing over the last two years, that whole ecosystem of uh, labor and, and the export of, uh, of labor out of Kenya. That is why we are seeing an increment, not just in jobs, domestic workers, I don't know, uh, drivers, I don't know what. We are, the, the reason why we are negotiating new bilateral agreements is that we want to go beyond those workers at that level. We want to export skilled labor, we want to export professionals, and we are creating the ecosystem for that to happen. In fact, if I tell you now, if you go to www neaims.go.ke you will see that there are 400,000 jobs on that platform different kind of jobs from different countries we are now trying to make sure that those jobs will not be 400,000 they will be a million and they will inc they will be largely as we conclude these bilateral agreements bilateral labor agreements, they will include many professional jobs, many skilled jobs. And I want to challenge, uh, go to e-citizens today and check whether what I am telling you is true or not, whether those jobs exist or they don't. And I want to challenge everybody to go to that space because that is one of our strategies. In fact, I saw on a Friday when there was a demonstration, one gentleman from my village was interviewed. And he said, you know, the president has not has, has, has failed us because uh, there are no many jobs in Kenya. Uh, the problem is that we are uh, so many people are still going abroad to look for jobs. Little did that guy know from my village that I am the one who facilitated those. The whole trajectory was about manufacturing. You know, how do you create local jobs, my friend? You, 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 you. The, the days when we just used to say, oh, we are going to grow the economy and the economy is going to create jobs, that is gone. We have to be deliberate. Housing, I know how many jobs I'm going to create in housing. Digital jobs, I know how many jobs I'm going to create. Export of labor, I know how many jobs I'm going to create. Now, what I had done in this year's budget is to put um, a mechanism where we promote our own manufacturing, local manufacturing using local materials, hiring local uh, uh, labor and local professionals, and creating local wealth. There is absolutely no re how, there is no, absolutely no way we are going. Uh, I'm meant to understand there's a bill on your table about the IBC, IBC reconst reconstitution. I'm wondering how long should this be? Or rather question would be, was it a deliberate not to assign the bill so that when your people, the people that are guiding you, people that cannot listen to us, when you want to try to send them home, we cannot because there's no IBC commission that's in place. So what is about IBC? Because uh, personally, I come from Nyanza, so, and my home MP is at Andy. But if I was coming from Nairobi or somewhere and surrounding, the MPs that really, really need to go home and the law that there is no IBC to be able to do this. Because Parliament, they have been Parliament, just, Parliament just that uh, passed the bill. It has found its way to my office. And I want to tell you, I will be expeditious. It will not go beyond Tuesday and the bill will be signed and uh, gazetted so that we can proceed with the process. I am just keeping it within the law. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. President. I think we can get another. I, I'm having issues with my phone. I don't know why. I mean, if I need the key to. So let's. Get... 
Hi guys. Uh, can you can you hear me, Osama? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Mila. So, uh, mine is not. Guys have said all the things that guys would love to say. Uh, mine is, uh, Mr. President. Probably, I think I should address you as Baba Charlene. Probably, you will get where I'm coming from. Um, and can I have your name, if you don't mind? Do you do you mind saying your name? But you, if you don't want, it's okay. My name is Mila. Mila, okay, Mila. So, uh, on the day, on the eve of the guys who are protesting to the parliament, I'm a photographer and that's what I do. And the guy who was shot, he was shot right in front of me. And it's something that has been living with me in my head since that day. And it really pisses me off. Like, I'm really pissed off. Like, the, the day you, you address the nation on that Tuesday, no one was remorseful. Like, like there was no, like, it's like, I don't know, it's just like, life, life doesn't matter to you guys in the government. Okay, I'll give you that. Later you came and apologized. But still, people in your government walk to TV stations. It's like life don't matter. And that thing, it, it has been disturbing me. Because I saw the boy being killed. Even if you go back, you can go check Larry Maduro videos. He traced how the boy was. He was carrying nothing. Like literally, he was carrying nothing. I know you've spoken about this over and over. But my question is, and it's not even a question. Mine is probably just go back and reflect. You are a father. You are a granddad. How would someone feel when the child is dead? I bet from where I, from where I stand, none of your government officials have even visited the families or reached out to the families from where I stand. Probably you guys just go back and reflect. Do we really matter as people who elected you? Like, how? where do we stand? Where do we stand as... As, as young youths, like the guy called Rex, he was a, he was a guy, basically, he was a guy who was born in 2002. Now he's dead. How does the mother feel? And some of, of your officials walk in TV stations, go on social media, and they're like, wanna jipi ya kifua, mtu wanna jipi. And that someone, someone was fucking, someone died. It's painful, Mr. President. It's really, and the, I'm talking this because I saw the boy dead. I even have the videos. When the boy was shot all i'm asking is let's have empathy someone just reaching out huh and and to the families that's all i'm saying guys go back and reflect and just have empathy and then this thing of guys could be the kifua it's it doesn't make sense someone like nyamu like why is he even there that's all i have to say Nasikia. Hello. Sorry, sorry we lost Asiki. you my friend. Uh, Tulikupoteza hapo kidogo hatukusikia. Sorry. You can I speak? Sorry, good people. I don't know whether whether we are.
Are we on? Yes. Yes, we are on. There's nobody, there's nobody asking questions. Perhaps I ask as we get out on the board. Maybe I'm talking too much or asking too much. Forgive me for that, but nobody's. Incompetence in one field to another department or another ministry. Please get new faces. You have a lot of people around you. You have a brains behind you. When I was growing up, when I was young, in the time of Kibaki, I used, I used to associate being a minister with some, some smart people. And you are one of those one of those people do in, in, in your sport back then. Suddenly, this day, you have people, the best they can deliver is just abuses and too much, too mouthy. Can you just bring us new people that are going to work? As, as recent as yesterday or two ago, came out to tell us that uh, the money we've been contributing for the injured and the, those we lost in, in this struggle was waived by Kenya National Hospital and other public hospital. She came late. The person that was in charge has been doing an excellent job. Hanifa keeps everything better than the government. Every detail of spent telling us ABC has done by her. That give us transparency, not the other people that just keep saying. Okay, let me uh, Mila made a very uh, passionate and I think uh, correct uh, analysis of what happened, especially of uh, 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 Kennedy, who, who died in, in Rongai. And I, and, I, and I believe that uh, he is right, you know, that that's really a very regrettable situation. And, and, and I apologize on behalf of every official who should have uh, done something about that situation. I have explained that the boy who died in Rongai was actually shot by one of the criminals who actually snatched the gun from the police. Uh, that criminal was, however, shot by the police because if the police did not shoot him, then he would have caused more deaths of more, of more Kenyans because these are reckless people Sometimes some of the, uh, of, the, of, the of, of those people don't, are not even in their, in their correct uh, level of uh, census, and, and therefore uh, it, it is regrettable. And uh, I agree with you, it is really unfortunate that you watch an incident that's going possibly to affect your life for a long time. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and I know you have made reference to me as a father, which is true. I have four Gen Zs in my home, and uh, I, I promise you they, they take me to task, you know, on, on some of these things. And I have to do a lot of explaining some of the time. And that's just the same way I'm explaining uh, to you guys here. I agree that some of our officials are, are arrogant. Some of them, you know, speak out of turn. And then some of them display, you know, obnoxious opulence, if I may say that, uh, which, which does not just anger the public. Sometimes I call in some of those people and I give them a piece of my mind because uh, even Nyamu, I have had occasion to sit her down, you know, and, and, and tell her, I mean, you, you, she needs to change what, what she's doing. And, and uh, you know, when you are uh, uh, in my position, you are also a father figure. You know, some of these uh, young people, they, they get excited about many things and, and sometimes they do, they do the, wrong, the wrong things. And, and I want to tell you that um, I know somebody here mentioned Karen Yamu. Karen Yamu is a, 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 a girl I have had, I've, I've had to sit her down sometimes and, and tell her, look, she needs to do things differently. Um, uh, so, so I, I agree with you that, uh, and, but I have also undertaken, you know, I, I have said, um, I know what is cutting. Uh, I know what's going on. And I have promised that, uh, uh, I will be making changes. I know you have said that I should, uh, I should not make changes. 
I, I should clean the slate uh, clean. But uh, you see, 